All right, in this video, we're going to talk about raising a product to a power. Like, first off, what does that mean? Well, it means, uh, say I have 4x to the second power, and I'm raising that to the third power. So I'm raising a product because it's doing a bit of a multiply there, and then I want to raise it to a power. That's what they're really asking you to do in the end of all things. So um, from here, uh, let's look at the order of operations because that tends to be the way I've been going about how to explain this recently. And I think it, you know, it sells reasonably well. As you can see, I've run out of um, white cardstock. Anyway, at the very top, of course, we have uh, parentheses because it's like the lord of all order of operations. From there, we deal with exponents, and then you have multiply and divide, and then add and subtract. Recall, multiply and divide doesn't matter what order they're in, so you just kind of make sure they go left to right. Add, subtract, same thing. If subtraction comes first on the left, that's what you do first. It doesn't really matter. But in the hierarchy of things, exponent beats multiply and divide, which beats add, add subtract, and uh, parentheses rules them all. In this case, what we're doing is we're taking a uh, mul uh, exponent question. So we're dealing with the idea, uh, like in the problem that I just had up here a second ago, where I was doing, was it 4x uh, to the second power raised to the third, or whatever it happens to be. Here it is. So in this case, I'm dealing with, I'm still raising the 4, the coefficient, to an exponent. So I am at exponent right now. Now, if you've seen the multiply video, you may, uh, the original multiply video, you may know I refer to the exponent as kind of like the little brother. So he gets the hand-me-down operation. Hand-me-down operation here would be multiply. Because really an exponent is uh, a bigger version of multiply. 2 to the third power means 2 times 2 times 2. So that's why multiply is the little brother or little sister, as it were, as opposed to divide. Now, um, we're just going to do 4 to the third power in the normal way. You don't do anything fancy there. Uh, so you get 64 for that one. Now, for the little brother operation, remember, we're just going to multiply them together. So x to the second power times 3. So really, it would be x to the 2 times 3. And by the way, this is not a real form. Don't start doing this on your paper uh, if you were not in a math class that I'm teaching, or I'm just not around. I mean, nobody does that. I'm just showing you as a visual. 2 times 3 is 6. So your final answer is 64 x to the 6. So let's do a couple. I think 3, actually. So I guess that's more than a couple. That would be a few. Sorry about the glare there. So for the first one, we're going to raise uh, 4bc to the 4th power, uh, all that, to the 5th power. The thing I think in my head that you should probably do first is to put a 1 anywhere uh, where the exponent is not shown. The reason is just because it tends to be really e or people have a tendency just to forget that part. They just leave the b out or they put b at the end or some other weirdness. You don't want to fall into that trap. Really broken out what this would look like, because we're going to treat the coefficients the same as it, uh, just 4 to the 5th power, so it looks like this. And then we're dealing with just as a visual, that's really what they're asking you to do. Um, so we treat the 4 to the 5th power exactly the same way. We're not going to do anything uh, you know, weird with it or whatever. We're just going to raise 4 to the 5th power, and that would be 1,024. So Now, if exponents are the big brother, the little brother operation would be multiply. So I'm going to do 5 times 1 and get b to the 5th power. And then I'm going to do 5 times 4 and get c to the 20th power. It's pretty simple stuff. I mean, that's it. There's nothing else you can do to it. You don't put B and C together and then make it B, C to the 25th power. That's not the same thing. Really, this says, well, I realize how far away the camera is right now. Um, in this case, this says B to the 1st, C to the 25th. That's not what you want. You want this. So just make sure you don't do that. Um, the other side of it is, well, what happens if it's raised to the negative 2? Well, you probably recall that when you have a negative exponent, and if you don't, there's a video on this, um, you need to sort of create a fraction if there's not a 1 created and flip it to the opposite side. Right now, all of this is basically over 1. So what we're going to do is flip this whole thing to the denominator and then make this a positive 2. So it becomes this, 1 over 6 to the, or 6m squared into the third 
to the second power. If any of this had have been outside of it and it wasn't multiplied by that negative 2, you'd leave it on top. But there wasn't anything like that, so we're just going to work it from here. I'm going to raise 6 to the second power. So it's 1 over 36. And that was a regular exponent relationship. So below exponents multiply, so I do 2 times 2 and get m to the fourth. And then n to the 3 times 2, which is the sixth power. So you end up with 1 over 36 m to the fourth n to the sixth. Now, if these had been like some sort of uh, multiply situation, it could have been all other sorts of weirdness. And you know, really not that difficult. And with 2, it's simple. I mean, you could just put this whole term times this whole term if that's the way you want to go about it. So you could check your work in simple situations just by doing this. I'm just going to pretend like all this was already on the bottom. 6 times 6 is 36. And remember, if you multiply the coefficients, you do the little brother, which is add. So 2 and 2 is 4. 3 and 3 is 6. So see, it comes out giving you the same thing, just in case you want to do it. Let's look at it one more situation where this might pop up. Uh, if the volume of a square cube, like some people will say, uh, occasionally I hear someone say square cube, but if it's a cube, it's got to be a square. Um, and you want to know the volume, and one of the sides is 6x to the third power. Well, the uh, formula for finding the volume of a cube is, of course, uh, v equals s to the third power. And the reason that's the case is because volume is a three-dimensional uh, measurement. I don't know what I was thinking there. It's a three-dimensional measurement. So if this is 6x to the third, so is this, and so is this, to find out um, the overall volume, I would take like say one slice of it, and then it would just be a square, and then you'd just add squares until you reach the top, which would be the same number as the distance to the side, that whole thing. Anyway, here's the formula. So all we're going to do is this. Six x to the third raised to the third power. If it was, by the way, if it's just a regular square, we just uh, do area equals side squared, so we'd be squaring it. Not a huge situation where you'd have to do this, but occasionally it does pop up. So let's raise 6 to the third power, because remember, the coefficient is treated the same as it was if the x to the third power wasn't there. If you raise 6 to the third power, you don't automatically start, just because there's a variable, you don't start multiplying it. 6 to the third power is 216. So treat it like this. I'm telling you this because in my time, this tends to be where people make a mistake. They don't, they do 6 times 3, so make sure you don't do that. Anyway the uh, little brother operation that's left to us is the multiply so I just do 3 times 3 and you get x to the ninth power so as far as raising a power to a power and all of that it's not really very complicated to do some people just get a little flustered with it remember to separate it out in your head and you'll be fine